Discover these three superpowers in the new Nutrilac Immunoprotect formula. For inquiries about Nutrilac Immunoprotect, contact Fawani Enterprise Banjo on 7191815. Nutrilac, everything your baby needs to grow. Hero Baby Milk is now available in the Gambia. Hero Baby is a leading brand of baby food in different countries of Europe. Hero Baby is produced under the most modern and secure processes to guarantee to mothers that they are giving their babies the highest quality product. Hero Baby counts on its own Institute of Infant Nutrition supported by the most important health professionals and organizations worldwide. So the correct ingredients are used towards each stage of a baby's development. Hero Baby, always the best for your baby. For viewers in the Gambia and around the world, this is GRTS News at 2200 hours with me, Winifred Nicole, in the headlines this evening. World Bank Director for West Africa sub region, Nathan Bilit, holds talks with Vice President Dr. Isitu Ture at State House. Stakeholders meet to review a document on minimum standards for establishment of residential care institutions for children in the Gambia. The Army Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Yakuba Drame, continues nationwide tour of military facilities. In the internationals, West African leaders present at a summit in Ghana agree to a new roadmap to launch single currency in 2027. And in sports, the 2021 National Interdepartmental Sports Association Football Tournament kicks off with some of the top institutions clashing in the first round of the games. Well, viewers, those are the headlines. Well, it's good to have you with us. Uh, we begin with um, the presidency. The World Bank Director for West Africa sub-region, Nathan Belit, has paid a courtesy call on the Vice President, Dr. Isitu Ture, at the State House. Mr. Belit, who is responsible for Senegal, Guinea-Bissau, Mauritania, Cape Verde, and the Gambia, was at the State House to brief the Vice President on his agency's recent interventions in the sub-region, where GRTS Yoro Jalo was at the State House and he filed in this report. In a brief meeting with the delegation, the Vice President, Dr. Isa Ture, commended World Bank for supporting the Gambia at a very difficult time. Dr. Ture further lauded the institution for accepting to restructure the financing agreement to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. I must say that we are grateful for their insights, knowledge and advice regarding the conclusions on this important document. On your, be on your behalf, Mr. Country Director, I would, like there I would therefore like to use this occasion to thank her most sincerely and the Gambia Country Office team for the best practices of sharing and discussion matters that affect the socio-economic situation of our dear motherland. 
We are great. Vice President Ture also used the opportunity to highlight some of the achievements as well as the challenges they faced during the period under review. The government of the Gambia has put in place preventive and containment mechanisms to stop the spread of the disease, such as the Public Health Emergency Regulation 2020, as a result of the surge in the number of cases. Following the government's initial universal in-kind transfer, rice, oil and sugar, to nearly 80% plus of the households in the country, the government also initiated the NAFA Quick Cash Transfer to complement this effort by financially supporting vulnerable households to mitigate the impact of COVID-19. The government of the Gambia initiated the NAFA Quick Cash Transfer supported by the World Bank and implemented by government institutions like NANA, Department of Community Development and the Department of Social Welfare. We therefore thank the World Bank for coming to our aid at a very difficult time and accepting to restructure the financing agreement to tackle the COVID-19 epidemic in the country. We are really grateful. For his part, the World Bank Regional Director Nathan Belletti said despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the Gambia government has made a significant progress. Mr. Belletti also held government for putting up what he described as sound economic policy management, particularly in the health sector for the procurement of vaccines as well as social protection program for the poor and vulnerable. The Gambia has obviously gone through a very difficult time coming out of this COVID, but at the same time, I think you should also know you have, uh, you have been able to withstand the storm better than many countries in, uh, in Africa. And I think it shows a, a certain degree of resilience in your economy, but also some good economic policy management that you put in place. It doesn't mean that uh, things are good or easy, but it means that they, they are not as bad as they could have been. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that, um, you know, I think uh, just like to recognize you for that in our, in our, in our own collaboration with, uh, with you, we've seen a high degree of diligence particularly in the, uh, the health response. As you know, we put in uh, over the last 12 months close to $50 million. Yes. Um, first, rapidly responding to the needs of medical equipment, and then in the latter part uh, uh, for the procurement of vaccines, mm -hmm. which the financing is available now. We just have to wait for the vaccines to be available globally. Um, and then also, which we complemented with the a, a program to support essential health services across the country. For Jarvis News, this is Zero Jalo reporting. The Directorate of Children Affairs under the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Welfare, with support from the United Nations Human Rights Office, has organized a two-day convergence to review the national document on minimum standards for establishment of residential care institutions for children in the Gambia. Well, Yasin Jiba witnessed the opening ceremony and she filed in this report. The minimum standard for the establishment of children residential care institutions in the Gambia was developed in 2012 to monitor and regulate care institutions for children in the Gambia. The review seeks to update the document to include check and balances in care and protections of children residential centers across the country. The Director of Children's Affairs at the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Welfare, Bintu Fati, stated that care institutions for children need to be regulated to ensure that there are compliances with standards in their operation. We realize that a lot of care institutions in Gambia, they are not regulated as expected and this is a mandate that uh, the Children's Act has given uh, uh, people running child welfare to ensure that uh, ch child care institutions are regulated by observing minimum standards. But you observe that especially the majelis, most of the time uh, people operate even without registering, without uh, observing child safeguarding protocols. As a result of that, that is why we call the child protection stakeholders to come and review the minimum standards that were in place to ensure that we regulate them as expected. According to officials, the government will take the lead in child protection systems and will observe the protocols to enforce standards in child care institutions.
the project coordinator responsible for PADEF projects in six countries in West Africa, Mary Adams, revealed that the project will support the government of the Gambia to strengthen their child care protection systems. The Gambia, like in many of those countries that I have talked about, and even outside of the ECOWAS zone, uh, we are seeing increasingly um, so many issues around uh, problems of children moving around, movement of children. They, we call them now children on the move, child trafficking, uh, children running away from care and are found in the streets. In fact, in the Gambia, it's, it's a huge problem right now as we speak. And um, for the fact that uh, a Gambia, the Gambia, being a small country, also has a, a, a number, a huge number of child care residential facilities, um, the number is not, not knowing, it's, it's not known, um, but their uh, study was conducted in 2013, um, which suggested that um, there are over 300 um, Majali centers operating in the Gambia. And that is uh, that includes also orphanages in 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 the country. So um, and there has been a lot of issues around children, you know, running away from daras, living in the streets, walking in the streets. So um, there is a there is a big problem. Officials for the stated that the project will help government to map out and profile the care institutions in the country. PABEF is a project that is aimed at supporting children who are victims of violation of human rights in six member countries in West Africa, including Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Senegal, Mali, Niger, and the Gambia. For the news, this is Yasin Jiba. The National Assembly has referred a motion to appoint two members of the Judicial Service Commission to the Public Appointment Committee for scrutiny. Rogiatias' Ibrahim Ajala reports that the Petroleum Commission Bill 2021 tabled by the Minister of Petroleum and Energy, Fafa Sanyang, has also been pushed for a third hearing. In a brief session at the National Assembly, Deputies considered and confirmed a motion by the Minister of Justice, Dawda Jallo. The motion seeks consideration for the appointment of one Suleiman Samba and Mary Samba as members of the Judicial Service Commission. Section 145.2 states that the members of the Commission, other than members referred to in A and F, shall be appointed by the President in consultation with the Chief Justice and subject to confirmation by the National Assembly. That uh, confirmation by the National Assembly is uh, why this motion is brought. The appointment bid has now been referred to the Public Appointment Committee of the National Assembly for scrutiny. The Petroleum Commission Bill 2021 was also tabled by the Minister of Petroleum and Energy, Fafa Sanya, for consideration. However, the document is set for a third reading on Monday, pending approval. Meanwhile, the health insurance is also before the National Assembly, subject to review by the Health Committee the Public Enterprise Committee, as well as Finance and Public Accounts Committee of the National Assembly. This assembly is now stand adjourned until Wednesday, 23rd June 2021 at 10 a.m. front. Ibrahim Jallo, GRTS News. Now, July 1st is the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party, CPC. It is a celebration that also reflects the triumph the CPC has taken the country from the ravages of poverty, foreign invasion, and internal armed conflicts. But over the past 100 years, the CPC has successfully led the Chinese people in the struggle for independence. The CPC founded the New China in 1948 and established a socialist system with open-door policy. In commemoration of this historic day, GRTS is by Ibrahim Cham, engaged the Chinese ambassador to the Gambia, His Excellency Ma Zhuang Chung, to reflect on the meaning of this day to the People's Republic of China. The Chinese ambassador, the Chinese ambassador to the Gambia, His Excellency Ma Jian Chung, has granted the national broadcaster an exclusive interview as part of celebrations marking the 100 year anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party. The conversation started with its dark days, 
when the country was poverty-stricken, marked by civil conflicts among the Chinese themselves. According to the ambassador, the formation of the Chinese Communist Party under the leadership of Chairman Mao served as a catalyst in steering the transformation agenda of China to a leading global economic superpower. The CPC founded the New China in the year 1949 and established the socialist system in China and uh, advanced the socialist theory, uh, implemented uh, reform and opening up policy. Uh, under the leadership of the CPC, China has made a historic leap uh, from standing up to growing rich and becoming strong uh, within just a few decades. We have completed the industrialization pro uh, process which Western developed countries have taken hundreds of years. China now has the most complete modern industrial system in the world. And the Chinese people living standards has been greatly improved in these years. Being among the first countries to regain economic stability during the pandemic, the Chinese diplomat said it is still supporting countries in need of medical and financial aid in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, adding that a consignment of COVID-19 vaccines is expected to arrive in July next month. Last year, in COVID-19 uh, response, China has achieved uh, significant progress. And uh, China also provided medical supplies to over 150 countries and 13 international organizations. Despite the big demands at home, China has provided over 300 million doses of vaccines to the world. Mapping out of the blueprint for China-Africa cooperation is in full gear. The GAMA's strong relations with the Chinese has registered significant intervention in areas of infrastructure, healthcare, and agriculture. In the area of infrastructure, uh, we will discuss with the Gambian side on the new, much-needed uh, projects. At the same time, uh, we will guarantee the quality and the completion time of the existing projects. For instance, the road and the bridge projects in URR uh, will be completed in this August. Chinese agriculture experts now is assisting the Gambian people in improving rice varieties, advancing agriculture technology, and training agriculture talents. Uh, after more than two years' efforts, they have got a certain achievements in Sapu uh, experimental area in CRR. Uh, and uh, they, already, uh, they also welcomed a pretty good uh, harvest recently. Uh, uh, to elevate the impact of COVID-19, China will continue to donate a batch of humanitarian food aid to the Gambia within this year. The Chinese ambassador revealed his embassy's plans to host a reception with Gambian dignitaries on Thursday to officially celebrate the 100 years of triumph for the Chinese Communist Party. Reporting for GRTS News, I'm by Ibrahim Chan. The Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Yakub Drame, accompanied by a high-powered military delegation, has embarked on a nationwide tour of military installations across the country. The tour, the second of its kind since his appointment as the Army Chief of Defense Staff, seeks to discuss issues of concern affecting the effective execution of duties. Bala Isotukata is with the tour party and she filed in this report. Remember, we owe it to the country and we've set for ourselves an enviable track record which we must jealously safeguard as serving members of the armed forces. With that said, I crave your indulgence individually and collectively in the past, we've done it exemplarily, with no adverse report against any individual. This time around also, we expect the same from all of you. This is the Gambia's military chief, 
Lieutenant and General Yakubu Drame, briefing his delegation as he sets out for another nationwide tour of military deployments across the country. It is the second such since his appointment as the Chief of Defense Staff of the Gambia Armed Forces, head in one of the most important institutions in the country. His mission is to meet and engage with the men and women in uniform, regional security chiefs and the civilian population. The nationwide tour will provide the country's top general and his high command the opportunity to relook into the plight and working conditions of the personnel of the Gambia Armed Forces and assess military installations across the country. The Army Chief made his first stop at the economic military base in the North Bank region, where he interacted and held a closed-door meeting with the camp commander. This was followed by a meeting with troops stationed at Njongon camp, which was preceded by a brief meeting with the elders of the community. We cannot afford to relegate, but rather we expect to see more of an enhanced approach to the way we do things, because we must set for ourselves high standards and vigorously we can pursue what we call excellence. And from all indications, you've made us feel proud. The way you execute your jobs, the way you interact with people, I did not force them to tell me about individuals and as a team. The Sefalu, the al the Imams of this, in this I mean, constituency basically, they've given me some positive notes about all of you. More so, the company that is deployed here. Your behavior is characterized by discipline. It's characterized by the selfless service to the community. It's characterized by the high sense of responsibility. And of course, crown it off by professionalism. And I want to commend your effort for that. Your visit is a clear indication of your care for the members of the Gambia Armed Forces. Despite your busy schedule, you create time to visit the troops. This is a significant undertaking by the CDS, who is accompanied by top officials of the force. Issues of national security, the upcoming elections and the COVID-19 vaccination campaign, among others, will be discussed during the tour, with the ultimate objective of making the military a professional force for a better delivery in its core mandate to maintain peace and security and safeguarding the territorial integrity of the Gambia. For GRTS News, this is Isa Tukaita. Stakeholders have launched a crucial electoral violence monitoring, analysis and mitigation project ahead of the country's December 4th presidential election. The project, which is co-funded by the European Union and Giz International, was organized by the West African Network for Peace Building, WANEP, with the aim of preventing electoral violence through the implementation of preventive mechanisms. Baba Sila has more on that. Violence monitoring, analysis and mitigation is a 42-month project being implemented by the West Africa Network for Peace Building, WANEP, through collaboration with various institutions in the country. During the process, WANEP and its partners are expected to work with national and community organizations to identify potential risks of electoral violence by developing and monitoring a set of indicators and analyzing the data obtained. The crucial roundtable conversion was attended by the chairman of the national electoral body, ECOWAS and European Union ambassadors and a host of representatives from key stakeholders in the project. Adam Okupoja deputized the chairperson of the steering committee of CSO's coalition on election. She underscored the importance of the project which she said will enhance public participation in the process to prevent electoral violence. The CSO's coalition on elections, therefore, is pleased to be accorded the opportunity to partner and work with the imam team in the implementation of activities that will promote the conduct of peaceful and transparent electoral processes in the Gambia. The European Union Ambassador Corrado Pampaloni is optimistic that the citizens will conduct themselves in a peaceful manner during the election as they have displayed during the past presidential election. Now we enter a new election cycle. On paper, democracy is deceptively easy. However, the presidential election in December 2021 will be taking place in unprecedented circumstances. The first fully democratic elections in over two decades, with a plethora of newly established political parties putting forward candidates. 
and many young voters signing up to the voter registry to have their voices heard for the first time. The chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission, al Haj Ali Mumamjai, assured the commission's responsibility to conduct a free and fair election, but was quick to raise some challenges confronting the electoral body. The Gambian system of election is among the freest, fairest, and most important in the whole world. Because you get everything from the beginning to end. There's no need to have any problem at all of fighting or disputes. Also, one of the challenges we face is what system are you going to use in the diaspora? Because we cannot transport these ballot drums over there. So also one of the issues we are trying to get in touch with the National Assembly is to have this ballot through system. Locally, we do use the ballot drum, but externally, we have to use the ballot paper. Fanta Boj and Samata from the Ministry of Interior officially launched the project on behalf of the Minister of the Interior. It is the role of the government of the Gambia to ensure we uphold to the task of delivering fair, inclusive, and peaceful election, which will consolidate democracy in the Gambia. The objective of this project are to recognize a negative impact of the past elections, that was 2017-2018. Um, such as violence, political tensions, undermining peace and stability of our dear country. Other speakers included the Deputy Executive Director of WANEP and the Resident Program Director of International Republican Institute, both of whom made a solidarity message. This project, which targets 11 countries in West Africa, including the Gambia, will contribute to the reduction of electoral violence in the region through capacity building of national and regional actors for peaceful electoral process. For GRTS News, I am Baba Silla. Still on elections, the CSO Coalition and One Up the Gambia, with funding from UNDP, have recently embarked on a caravan in the North Bank region. The tour aimed at sensitizing communities on the ongoing voter registration exercise, with meetings and engagements in Ndugukebe and Jawara in the lower Badibu district. A regional correspondent in the North Bank, Famarakani, has more. The caravan arrived in Dungukebe on a Lumo day, a weekly market that brings together a cluster of villages in the North Bank and even from the neighboring Senegal. The weekly convergence is one of the biggest in this part of the country. Moving within the pavements of the market, the team is already set, disseminating and sensitizing locals on the ongoing voter registration exercise. The message is anchored on the significance of the exercise, the criteria for qualification to obtain the voter's card, as well calling on the electorate to participate effectively throughout the process. Babu Karnyang shared his impression with GRTS. He said the process is so far running smoothly. Generally, we are impressed that people are coming, but we are encouraging uh, every other person who have not yet registered to go out in their numbers and register, especially the youth and, and the women. The voter's card is a very significant document. It serves as the ticket for every qualified Gambian to choose their leader during all elections in the country. According to the Independent Electoral Commission, a good number of Gambians have registered so far. And for the CSO coalition, the sensitization and monitoring will continue to ensure that the registration is conducted free and fair. Working with the CSO Coalition is the West African Network for Peace, the Gambia. Momoduba, program officer, said the caravan is part of efforts to equip locals with knowledge and to encourage participation. Um, the coalition um, was supported by UNDP and IRI to come up with um, a three-year strategy plan. And this three-year strategy plan is going to guide the affairs of the coalition for the upcoming um, elections. Voter registration teams are in all districts across the North Bank, moving from one community to another. Babu Kanyang called on communities to take ownership. Issues relating to electoral uh, uh, laws are 
mandated to be regulated by IEC. So if they see anything that you know that they don't like, or if they see that anything, let them report that to IEC rather than taking the law in their own hand. A meeting in Jawara brought together youths, women and village heads. Here, discussions were centered on the significance of the voter registration, the procedures for attestations, among all the vital issues that surround the process. Participants had the opportunity to directly interact with the officials of WANEP and the CSO coalition. We managed to sound the opinion of locals on the entire voter registration process. I used to have trouble thinking that my daughter, who is married in Senegal, may not be able to have the voter's card. But with this meeting, I was able to understand the dictates of the law on that issue. And I think the registration is progressive even though challenges are inevitable, Bintabajo told GRTS. The challenges we normally encounter as border communities is the issue of attestations, especially on our children resident in Senegal. Even last week, we had issues like that in Nauleru and Ker Ardo. I think authorities should do something about that, Pa Alkali Pane, the village head of Njawara, asserted. The caravan by the CSO coalition in partnership with one of the Gambia is part of efforts to raise more awareness on the ongoing general voter registration exercise to ensure peaceful conduct of the entire process. For the news, I am Famara Kanye. Officials of UNFPA and partners have concluded their outreach program of awareness and sensitization campaign on gender-based violence to communities and schools in Karawan, North Bank region. The event was attended by local authorities and the UNFPA country representative. Kajetu Juwara has more on that. Officials of UNFPA and partners on Sunday wrap up their outreach exercise to communities and schools in the North Bank town of Karawan. The colorful event brought together UNFPA country representative Kunle Adenei, the chief and the governor. Speaking to GRTS, Kunle Adenei of UNFPA said the activity was meant to expose students to explore skills and also fight on all forms of gender-based violence. The threat this campaign is hinged on a, on a conversation we have on providing the necessary health care for our women. Um, this is what we call the I Am For Zero campaign. And this is hinged on uh, UNFPA's three transformative results of ending gender-based violence, ending the unmet for family planning, and um, ending all maternal deaths. Um, so we'll continue to do this. It's an allied service of UNFPA de Gambia. Um, we might actually increase it to be more than one once a year. These services that we're bringing are already there, but sometimes you need a campaign to boost knowledge, information, and services to do that, and we'll continue to do that. The governor of North Bank Region, Lamin Saidi Khan, said the campaign has been a success while promising his partnership with UNFPA for similar initiatives. The events that are happening in the region are very crucial to the uh, lives of women, not only women, but ourselves, men as well, so that we know the importance of our family life. I'm appealing again for you to bring more programs of this nature to our region. The campaign seeks to demand equal opportunities for all, recognize girls' rights in schools, and accelerate gender-based violence response mechanism. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Khadija Tujuwara. Action Aid International de Gambia, United Purpose, and the Catholic Relief Services continue their community engagement. The outreach program is aimed to empower citizens towards environmental sustainability activities. The project funded by the European Union began in January 2020 and is expected to end December 2022. Senabujain was there and she files in this report. This organization has recently concluded a caravan tour on the effects of climate change in the various regions. Speaking to the forum was the program coordinator of United Purpose, Ismail Jaju, as he emphasizes the importance of this engagement. We all have the knowledge why climate change 
is accelerating. People will recall 10, 15 years back, if you look at the environment, you look at the number of trees, you look at the amount of rainfall, you look at the amount of uh, wildlife around the country, and you look at the amount of fish, which is the, uh, the most valuable resources for the Gambians, where are we today? It's almost non-existent. So that's enough evidence for us to point out. And that's why this, this occasion is organized, so that we learn together, we share these evidences together, and what next, so that how do we address climate change? As implementing partners, Action Aid International The Gambia, head of programs, Fanta Jata Sol, highlighted how the three organizations will work towards identifying the issues affecting climate sustainability. We have to have interest in our environment and save it. As such, we thought this is one forum that can bring us together to discuss the critical issues that are affecting our environment in practice, in attitude, and also the policies that are either lacking or not being implemented to protect our environment. The day's engagement also included a presentation led by Jero Mane, retired agriculture director, who is currently serving as the consultant for the ongoing project. Farmers, uh, what I would advise from during this forum is to, to, uh, for, to uh, for farmers to go in for to go in for diversification, that is to grow other crops rather than depend on rice and uh, uh, groundnuts. As participants of the forum, Mary Dabo from Nyamina Dankunku thanked the partners for this gesture in engaging them about the importance of the climate and how to preserve their environment. Women of the Gambia wish to prepare themselves and protect their environment and the effects of climate change. The effects of deforestation affect rainfall patterns, so this project will help us sustain our forests and surroundings. Uh, we want to bring them into one forum. Uh, uh, we want to uh, start discussing. This is the second time we are bringing them together, but to, to engage ourselves, but also so to, to share experience uh, in terms of what, what has happened, uh, what is happening now, and what are the next steps in terms of climate change, adaptation, the challenges uh, that are ongoing in, in, in the Gambia, and how we can, uh, in the long term, engage uh, government policy makers to also reduce climate change risk in, in, in the country. This forum's engagement is expected to go a long way in addressing emerging issues as key measures will be noted and proposed to government and partners for implementation. Zainab Bujain for GRTS News. Project steering committee members of the large-scale ecosystem-based adaptation project embarks on a field monitoring exercise across EBA project sites in rural Gambia. Eba's tree nursery site at Kiang Manduar was the first port of call, which accorded the officials the opportunity to have first hand information on how the nursery is faring. The committee members later proceeded to the mangrove restoration sites in Kiang Birkama Manding at Jamaru before visiting the Kiang West National Park, where officials are demarcating a buffer against bushfires. The newly renovated offices and residential quarters at Dumbutu Forest Park, courtesy of the EBA project, was the last point inspected by the Environment Project Steering Committee before wrapping up their first field trip. The delegation comprised the Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of the Environment, Special Advisor to the Environment Minister and other stakeholders. The tour continues to the eastern part of the Lower River and Central River regions. Well, we will take our first commercial break. The news continues in just a moment. The much-anticipated Euro 2020 football tournament has returned. Yes, the Euro tournament right at your doorstep. 24 teams all fighting for one giant trophy. Watch all 52 games live on GRT as brought to you by your favorite GSM operator at Free Cell. And that's not all. Call or SMS 1010 to win millions of Dallas's and the Scorpions national team jersey after every game. Plus, you can win an air ticket to watch the African Cup of Nations live in Cameroon. Africell, in support of sports. Where Africell goes, oh, oh, nobody dares to follow. Dares to follow.
bit of sports for you. The 2021 National Interdepartmental Sports Association NISA football tournament kick-started on Sunday with the Gambia College starting with a 2-1 win over GPPC. In the other game, the state broadcaster begins their campaign with a narrow 2-1 loss to the Gambia Fire and Rescue Services. Well, Farmer Abadi witnessed that game and he now filed in this report. It is said that first games are usually tough, and this contest between the Gambia Fire and Rescue Service in Raid and the Gambia Radio and Television Services football team in Green was a tough encounter. Fire service first threatened within 10 minutes when they came close and had their attempts saved, and here tears broke the deadlock from the resulting counter-attack, as David Gomez received a long pass from the goalkeeper and cleverly slowed the ball beyond the rushing fire service goalkeeper. From that moment, fire service showed urgency and responded on the 21st minute when team captain Ibrahim Asala scrambled home from close range to make it one all. Two minutes later, fire service were awarded a penalty when Marcy was penalized for this challenge. And the captain Ibrahim Asala again stepped up and perfectly converted the spot kick to put fire service ahead at half time. <laughs> GRTS returned from the intervals determined and kept pushing. And in the closing stages, they were awarded a penalty when Mr. Fadeba was brought down. But the decision was reversed by the referee after he consulted with his assistant, who claimed to have flagged an offside before the foul. GRTS head coach Lehman Sanyan quickly shifted his focus to the plans ahead of the next game against KPPC. We would go back to the, to the, to the drawing board and then, you know, rectify our mistakes and then you know work hard for our subsequent gym we were fragile and then you know with uh, recoveries too were another challenging things but uh, and then scoring as well but that is left to me as a coach to go back and then you know train my players my preparation for this gym was um, very good and uh, my gym plan works today and I was expecting that I, I, my gym plan will work today and this is what happened finally Organizers call on the institutions to exercise discipline throughout the tournament. Our city stayed to create social cohesion among the civil servants. We always buttress this, let's maintain discipline as we are workers. We are not students, we are not, um, how they call it, Nawetan team or anything else. We are representing an institution, so discipline is key in anything we do. So let's maintain discipline and foster mutual understanding. Sixteen departmental teams are taking part in this year's National Interdepartmental Sports Association football competition. Farmer Abaji, GRTS News. Well, not a bad start for the state broadcaster, but um, wish them the very best of luck in their next encounter. Well, still with sports, Medical FC is the new champion in Central River Region. After Saturday's final, saw them beat Jereng FC 2-1 in the Regional 3rd Division League Final. Mudulam Insane reports. The second time these two giants of the Central River Region are locking horns in the space of a week, as they battle for the championship of the regional third division league, the mad watering final between Medical FC and Jaring, a most watched game for regional football fans, saw a multitude of spectators gather for the second leg after the first game failed to produce a winner. Playing at home, Medical control play in the opening half of the game, creating chances with the combination of Ibrahima Sow, Buba Gasama, and Usenu Kamara, threatening the visitors' defense. Usenu Kamara of Medical FC scored the opening goal of the final with a stunning shot from close range to give his side the lead. Jaring trailing a goal down finished the first half strongly and they responded through Basiru Suso who shot from outside the box left goalkeeper Buba Sambo scrambling. Medical increased their lead with Usenu Kamara again capitalizing on this free kick by substitute Samajasi. Two one, it ended in favor of Medical FC, who became champions of CRR for the first time. This year, we we are not setting back. We want to go to second division directly, and I don't think there is nothing that will stop us. And I believe God will help us because. 
If you work hard, you achieve it. You understand? Medical have been working hard. I can remember when we first started, people started saying they cannot do it. This is an institution, but thanks to the management of Barasan Hospital, which have been supportive both day and night. And there is something I will never forget. That is my technical team. Me being the coach did not do everything. I have a very solid technical team. No, I feel so sorry for myself because I'm not happy. I'm in a bad mood at this particular time because to be in the second runner every year I come to final and I cannot be able to lead a, take a cup to my place. No, it's not a, it doesn't show me that I'm a hundred percent a good coach. Medical FC, after being crowned winners in the Central River region, have now booked a place in the final stage of the regional third division championship. They are expected to meet champions of other regions to fight for a possible qualification to the second division. Murulamin Sane reporting for GRTS Sports from the Central River region. And that brings us to the end of this bulletin, but a quick look at our top stories before we go. World Bank Director for West Africa Sub-Region, Nathan Belit, has held talks with Vice President Dr. Isetu Ture at State House. Stakeholders have met to review a document on minimum standards for establishment of residential care institutions for children in the Gambia. Army Chief of Defense Staff Lieutenant General Iakuba Drame has continued his nationwide tour with visits to military facilities. In the internationals, West African leaders present at a summit in Ghana have agreed to a new roadmap to launch a single currency in 2027. And in sports, the 2021 National Interdepartmental Sports Association football tournament has started with some of the top institutions clashing in the first round of games. Well, viewers, that was all in this edition of the News at 10. Well, from me, Winifred, Nicole, and the entire news team, thanks for watching and do have a peaceful night. opportunity to win amazing prizes yes be a part of the big milk mega promotion and the winner box of rice box of sugar gallon of cooking oil cartons of pig milk and other pig milk products all you do is collect 10 pig teen drafts in an envelope get ready as many envelopes as you can to increase your chances of winning with your name address and the telephone number drop off at the collection centers Birkama fmb radio Talinding market serakunda market tanje beach taboko traffic lights or call 7784006 or 2252241 when it comes to milk it's gonna be big. New look, same taste.